Hi everybody, um, so for today's Bite Size Biology we're going to focus on dihybrid crosses. So the two questions we're going to look at are 20 2018 question 13 and our second one is going to be 2012 question 10. Um, both of them are dihybrid crosses. So let's get started. So we're told in the question there, Gregor Mendel, he studied pea plants, which we know he was the Austrian monk there, who is known as the father of um, genetics. And you're asked for the first one, which is pretty standard, to define both his laws, segregation and independent assortment. Um, but for this lesson now, this bite-sized lesson, we're just going to focus on the actual genetic crosses opposed to the, um, the laws, which can just be learnt off. So let's move on to part two. So uh, let's be reading it. Uh, dwarf pea plant with green seeds, okay, green seeds and dwarf pea plant we're focusing on there is crossed with a plant that has heterozygous for both height and seed colour. And you are to indicate by means of genetic cross whether the, the genotypes and the phenotypes of the progeny of the cross if there is no linkage. Okay, so I suppose initially we can see we have a problem there. We know we have dwarf there, we have green. But what's the other colour and what's the other height? Is it dwarf and tall? Is it dwarf and medium? So we have to go back up to this little thing over here, our little box. So if we're reading that there, and I'm just going to mark a few things on this. Okay, we have round and wrinkled. Okay, well, round and wrinkled weren't mentioned in this question here. Okay, so it actually it makes no difference to us. But the next one, if we're looking at it here, for the yellow and um, green seeds, when they're crossed, you get all yellow. Well, straight away, that tells me that yellow is dominant. And purple and white, well, we don't really care about the flower colour, um, but underneath it there, where we have our tall and dwarf, and when they're crossed, you get all tall. So therefore, again, we're dealing with tall being the, um, the dominant gene there, okay? So we have our two dominant ones there. So dwarf, obviously, is going to be recessive, and... We're looking at seed colour there, green is also going to be recessive. So we put all of that information into a key. And I can't stress how important keys are in genetic crosses. They don't actually get you any marks, but I find students who don't write out the keys will have problems later on. So let's have a look at it. We have dwarf there, so and dwarf and tall. And we know that tall is dominant, so we do two capital T's for that. And we do a capital T and a lowercase t. Because we know if it's heterozygous, the dominant gene is the one that's going to be expressed. The only exception for that is when there is incomplete dominance. But you'll be told if that was the um, if that was the case. So look, two small t's is going to be dwarf. And then if we go back up here to our seed colour, okay, so we have our yellow and green here, and yellow being the dominant one there. So look, I'll just go back over here. And if yellow is dominant, I'll do two capital Ys and one capital Y, one lowercase y, and that's going to be our yellow. And two lowercase Ys then is our um, green. Now I should box around that and put that to the side. So let's go to the question there in terms of figuring out what the parents' um, genotypes are. Okay, so a dwarf pea plant. Okay, so dwarf has to be two small Ds. Great with green seeds, so green seeds being two small y's. Okay, so we have one parent sorted, so we'll just do our x here. So we have to figure out what the next um, genotype, the next parent is. And if you're reading it there, it says it's heterozygous there, okay, for both height and seed color. So that's an easy one, that's straight away, that's gonna be a capital T, lowercase t, capital Y, lowercase y, okay? So we have our, um, we have the genotypes of the parents. Now, once you have genotypes of the parents, your next logical step, and you always do it in this way, you do your parents, and then you'll have the gametes then coming next. So, we must figure out what the gametes are, and the gametes are always going to be half the value, uh, half the number. So, if you have four letters there, each of the gametes has to have two letters. Okay, so if we're looking at this here. Well, our only gamete that we can get for the first parent there is going to be a lowercase t and a lowercase y. No matter what combination you do, that is the only option that you can have. I put a circle around this, um, as I've always done for gametes. Uh, you don't have to, I just find it's easier um, for me to figure out what are the gametes and what are the parents and um, so forth. So look, I put that in and let's have a look at the next one. 
So we have a capital T there that could go with a capital Y. We have a capital T that can go to lowercase y. So for something that's heterozygous for both um, both conditions there, you're always going to have four options. So we have our capital T's picked. Now let's look at lowercase t's. We could have a capital Y and we could have a lowercase t and a lowercase y. So as per usual, we'll have our four options there um, for something that is double heterozygous for both traits. Now, it is those gametes that are going to go into our genetic cross. So we just go down here, small bit. Now, it doesn't matter which um, gametes you put on the x-axis and which gametes you put on the y-axis. Uh, it's uh, up to you, I suppose, really, what you think is going to work best for you. So I'm just going to go this way. I'm going to put my this parent over here, or sorry, the, the gametes from that parent um, down here. So lowercase t, lowercase y. Over here, then, I'm going to put the rest of them. And again, give yourself plenty of space for this. Oh, there we go. Capital T, lowercase y. We have a lowercase t, capital Y. And finally, we have our small t, small y. Okay, so we do auto cross there. I'm just going to do a different color to make things a little bit easier to read. So we have capital T, lowercase t, capital Y, lowercase y. Next one. So we have a capital T, lowercase t, lowercase y, lowercase y. Next one, we have our small t, small t, capital Y, small y. So it will be two small t's, capital Y, small y. And finally, we have small everything. Okay, so these four here are the progeny of the offspring, the potential offspring you could have. And they're the genotypes, essentially. Now, if we're going back up to the question, the question asks for indicate by means of genetic cross the possible genotypes. Okay, we have that done. And now we're asked to find out the phenotypes, which is here. So let's go back down and describe our genotypes. So the phenotypes is just a physical description of the genotypes. So we have a capital T, lowercase t. Go back up to your key, and this is where it's coming in handy again. And you can see there it has to be tall. So tall, and if we're looking at this across, then it has to be tall and yellow. The yellow seeds. Next one, we have capital T there as again, so it has to be tall. And we have two lowercase y's, so that means it has to be tall and green. Next one, we have two small t's, so that's going to be our dwarf sized. And we have a capital Y and a lowercase y, so that has to be yellow. And finally, we have a dwarf size again because you have two lowercase t's and now you also have two lowercase y's so it has to be green. Again, I'd be looking at the key um, the whole time to figure out what these guys are. Okay, so we have our... Let me just duplicate that there a small bit for me. Um, just to be, to be sure, to be sure we have every bit of information in. So we have our phenotypes, our phenotypes being these guys over here. We have our genotypes, our genotypes being these guys over here. Okay, uh, so we have answered the question for part uh, two. So we're reading for part three there. Um, the question reads, explain how the results of the cross in part two above would differ if the genes for the height and seed color were linked. So as soon as you have linkage, guys, it's always the same. Your offspring will have less, there will be less variation for the offspring. Basically, that's what it is. That's all you need to say. Okay, there will be less variation in terms of the offspring. You won't get this, um, if we're looking at it there, this one is to one is to one is to one ratio. Okay, um, it'll probably be half that actually. So if they're, if they're linked, okay, you'll have less variation in terms of offspring. And yeah, no, that's, that's it guys for that one. Okay, so look, we'll leave that one there. That was 2018, question 13. And now we'll have a look at, um, at 2012 there, question 10. Okay. Okay, everybody, let's continue on with our 2012 question there, question 10. Um, we're given pea plants again, actually. And this time we're looking at color and texture. So we're told there at the top, we're given um, pea plants, and you're told which is, they're not linked. 
and where I said that the Leo for Smoot, which is a capless, okay, is dominant, okay, because that's where the capital is coming from, to wrinkled, okay, so we know that. And we know the Leo for Y, capital Y there, it's yellow, um, is dominant to the Leo for green, which is a lowercase y. Great, okay. Now, part one, or part I, I should say, is state the laws, um, both of them, and we've seen that already in 2018, so it's a common enough question to come with these. They're just something you have to learn off. But part two, let's have a look at that. That's the genetic question now. So, using the above symbols and taking particular care to differentiate between uppercase and lowercase letters, first one, give the genotypes of a pea plant that is homozygous in respect to seed texture and heterozygous in respect to seed colour. And then state the, um, the phenotype then, um, refer to it. Okay, so look, this is what we're going to do first. We're going to write out our key. Uh, because a key for me and you know, is the most important part of this. Because if we get the key right, we get everything else right. So we put that key here. Now, what are we dealing with? Okay, we have seed coat there. So smooth is um, a capital S and wrinkled is a lowercase. Okay. There's no incomplete dominance. So two capital S's and one capital S, one lowercase s, is going to be smooth. Now, you have to be careful here with your letters, particularly with the S's, because a small S and a big S are essentially the same thing, really, aren't they? Okay, so exaggerate everything in your exam. Don't leave it to, um, to chance. Same for the Y's, actually. Some Y's, some people do Y's very similar. So on this one here now, we're looking at the Y's, and we're told yellow is dominant to green, which is actually very similar to the one we were just doing. So capital Y, capital Y, capital Y, lowercase y, that is going to be our yellow. And two lowercase y's is going to be our green. Okay, now, for part two, you're asked to give the genotype of a pea plant as homozygous in respect to seed texture. Okay, so seed texture, if we're dealing with that, um, it's got to be smooth or wrinkled. Now, we actually have two options here. We could either use a lowercase s for both of them, or we could do an uppercase S for both of them. It doesn't matter, um, so it's, it's up to yourself. So I'm just going to do, for this one here, um, I'm just gonna might as well mark down the question while I'm at it. Okay, we'll use a different color pen for that. We'll say I there. I'm just gonna do two small S's. That's all, two small S's there. And that's our, um, that is our homozygous in terms of seed texture. Now, heterozygous in terms of seed colour, well, if that's the case, you only have one option, and that can only be a capital Y, lowercase y. Okay, so that's the first one there, and actually I'm looking at it there, it should actually be part two, really. Okay, and we're asked to state the phenotypes for this guy. Okay, so the phenotype for us, and again, go to your key. Two small s's, it's going to be wrinkled. My writing is awful wrinkled and we've got a capital Y and a lowercase Y there so that has to be yellow. Yellow seeds. So wrinkled and yellow seeds. Grant. Okay, for part three though. Now we'll write it down here first before we continue. Okay, so what does it say? Uh, what phenotype will be produced by the genotype capital S lowercase s capital Y lowercase y? Okay, so if it's capital S, small s, capital Y, small y. Go to your key. And your key there, you can see the capital S, lowercase s here is smooth. And we have a capital Y there, lowercase y, and that's yellow. So we write that down. Smooth and yellow seeds. Great. Okay. Now, part three, uh, there's a sub-question underneath this, which isn't so obvious. Um, give another genotype that would produce the same phenotype. So we need to produce a genotype that would give you the same phenotype as this over here. But you can't use your answer, um, your genotype that you've used over here. So we can't use this. Well, that's actually okay because we couldn't use this anyhow because our two lowercase s's are wrinkled. So that couldn't give us, um, couldn't give us smooth here. So we need to think of a different option. Okay, so I have that down there. So we want smooth again. So we'll change this up, we'll say cap less, cap less, and we want yellow, okay? So we can just keep it as our capital Y there, capital Y, okay? 
We could have, if we wanted to, you could have done two capital S's and a capital Y and a lowercase y. Because that genotype technically is going to be um is going to be different to um to this guy over here. Okay, so if we did two capital S's and a lowercase y and an uppercase y, perfectly fine. I just did um uh, homozygous dominant for, for both. Okay, so that kind of answers our answer for um for part um three there as well. Okay, so that's great. So we have question two, three done, we have question two done. Okay, let's look at what IB is going to bring us. So if the allele for smooth were linked to the allele for green, okay, so smooth and green are linked, and the allele for wrinkled was linked to the allele for yellow, okay, give the genotypes of the two gametes that the parent would produce in the greatest numbers, okay. So that's a bit of a mouthful there, really, isn't it? So we go back to it there. And we write down our um, our genotype of us. And I'm just going to move on down a small bit there, guys. Okay, so capital S, lowercase s, capital Y, lowercase y. And we're told smooth, and let me see, where is it there? What does it say? So smooth is linked to allele for green. Okay, so that means if they're producing um, gametes for this one over here, that S and green, so it has to be a capital S and a lowercase y. They're linked. That's the only option they could have for us, okay? And if we're looking at the next one then, um, smooth is linked to green, so therefore um, wrinkled is linked to yellow. So we write it out there, okay? And if it's um, smooth, okay, we have, again, we have our um, capital S that we have to put down over here. And we're dealing with yellow, so it has to be a capital Y. Let me put a circle around that. Okay. Um, so give the genotypes of the two gametes, which are these guys here, for the parent will produce in the greatest numbers. Okay, so look, that's it, guys. Um, there are two genotypes there, so we've kind of, we've answered everything there now, um, bar the, if we're going back to it, bar the, stating the laws which you kind of just need to learn off but look whenever i'm doing these okay it's always the same setup okay do your key okay that's if you can get the key right you'll be fine okay um read the question okay break it up okay you don't need like this all this first part up here okay is essentially your key okay put it in here and then you can um then you can um hone in on what you need to use in the actual question Okay, so I really I can't stress that enough how important it is to do this key. Okay, because you you will make mistakes otherwise. And if I were you guys as well when you're doing this for exam technique more than anything, that when you're labeling your um your numbers, um your questions, okay, give yourself a bit more space. Uh mine are a little bit bunched together here, um, which isn't ideal really. And if I were you, I would actually highlight it, all the answers at the very end. So we have our answers here and we have our wrinkled and yellow sea colors here and we have smoothened okay so you you know what i mean there uh so look that's it guys i hope we took something from it um so again we did 2012 question there and we did a question from 2018 uh, and they were both on dihybrid crosses okay guys over and out so